to a pony, but we'll try. I'm not sure how long that's going to stay on the wall. What I've got to do is form that cable into the bend. And I'm going to drill the holes in the trunk and when I finally got it set. I just thought I'd set this up just to show you how I'm going to bend this in. For a start, there's a million miles, so I'm going to cut it down. So I'm going to get a measure first and foremost. This is a four car seventy mil. So now I've got that down, what I'm going to do is really overextend this bend. There we go. Don't be afraid to just give it a bit of welly. I didn't need any screwdrivers or anything extra. I had my breath off. You need to just be able to decide where the bend's going to go. You judge that. And then really overextend it. You don't overextend it for a long time. So it will set back to where it needs to be. So I'm going to put a temporary tie on this now, and then I can get my measures where the glands going to go. I'll find the tie ups. Yeah. Lid off. Right so what I want. I'm going to mark either side of that. Do that now. So I go one there and one there. And then I know that I've got to get the 40 mil. Let me put this pen top out my mouth. I've got to get the 40 mil gland in that area. And then I've also got somewhere here to get the stuff and gland. 20 mil stuff and gland for the earth to go in but I've also got to get the banjo in 
So I think the banjo will go at the back. The stuff on land at the front. And uh, I'll get it all measured up. I don't think I'll be able to show you because it's all underneath, see? So I'll just put it in and then we can, uh, I can drill the hole and then we'll get back to where we are because I'm going to put the gland on and show you my step-by-step -step process of putting the gland on when I gland cables because I don't think I've ever actually done that all the way through. So good like an apprentice electrician tip type of thing. So we'll get back to that in two ticks. There's the thing. So I've had to remove the cable out of the way so I can get the drill in and whatnot. But what I haven't done is laid it there flat. I've kept it bent over that way. And then what that does, it keeps the bend from unforming. So you don't have to reform the bend when you come to put it away. Little, just little touches, little tips like that. And it'll just save, just saves heartache really. Right. So we've got the cable. There's the gland. There's a little red measury thing. So we're going to put it on. So I'm putting this to the back of the cable. So I'm going to go to the back side of the gland. There. So I know when I transfer that to the back of this, that acts like a mimic of the cable. So we transfer it across. And that's where I'm going to need to ring it, where the armour is going to get cut. Just a little mark on there. There we go. Now. You can obviously do this next step with a junior hacksaw, but I do it with the exhaust cutter. Nice and level, and it won't be cut. Put that through it now. I have to readjust it to the next one. This is where you give it a bit of a bit of hammer. Give it a good old squeeze. I just want to make sure I don't go all the way around it. There we go. You've only got to really turn through 90 degrees because then you know that you've put pressure on at 90 degrees. That's all you needed. Whereas a junior hacksaw, you've got to go all the way around it, right the way around it. You know what I mean? have to do the stripping on the lay it down on the floor. Fantastic, look, there's four left on. Now then, I'm going to lift it back up and then we'll put the gland on. Okie cokey, so glands on where it needs to be. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift that up out the way. I'm just going to put a temporary tie somewhere up there to allow me to do the next step which is the next cut to expose the armour which then obviously the cone 
goes inside of and then we can bring the gland up to meet that tighten it get it all tightened up that just keeps that out of the way now what you need this is a 40 mil gland so although this That is what 10 mil, 15 mil, 12 mil, or something like that. So you're sort of going to need about double that in order for the armoring to be able to spread enough to accommodate the cone without the armoring being too at an, like at an angle like that, sticking out far. It needs to be able to just sit inside of it. So we'll try and have a look at that. I do it again with the exhaust cutter. Just don't put as much pressure on. You can obviously do it with a standing knife, it's not a big deal, but I like to do it with the exhaust cutter because it gives you a nice, round, equal, even line, and it meets up, obviously. Whereas when you go around with a knife, you could be high or low, or and it just looks that little bit better. I'm judging this by eye, but I'm going to say there, so nice and steady, ring down, and then if we have another look, what is it? Twenty-five mil. That should be enough. So now, on that, with the chamfered edge on it, and I'm just going to prise the armour out. So you can do it with a hack knife, you can do it with a big screwdriver. I used to have a miniature crowbar, but I don't know where that went. It was brilliant. It fell out of my pocket or something. I used to love that little thing. Actually, I had two of them. The board disappeared. Must have someone stealing my crowbars and breaking into dolls' houses or something. So there we go. You don't have to go mad with that. It's just enough for the cone to sit inside. So, off with the cone. And down she goes. Now, so that's sitting tight up to where it should be sitting and then we bring that up and then what happens is there's not enough, there's enough to spread the arm runs but there's not enough to come out the back like here which makes it look terrible and basically you've done a terrible job if you do that. So I'm going to tighten this up now. What I've been trying out the last couple of weeks is a pair of mole grips with a chain on them. Like plumbers might use them to tighten big pipes and stuff. But I thought if plumbers are using them to tighten big pipes, why not try the gland? So, here we go. Got the smooth edge grips. So that's pretty tight. Well, I am just going to adjust this just to see. Lift it up a little bit.
Yeah. Yep, that's tight enough. So there we are. Now what I'm going to do is about there is ring around so it um, I can strip it when it goes in. picture but he's been sat there curled up asleep while I've been wandering this cable. An old sight fox. I think he's been watching uh, the YouTube videos and he wanted to get a, a live a live stream so he's snuck in and had a little bit of a, a little bit of a sit and watch. Cable's in now, so I'm just going to go and look at something and then I'll be back to terminate it. He's still there. All curled up. Anyway, back to the job at hand. Cable's in. I'm just going to put the earth up inside now bring the shroud and then I'm going to open that and have a look at the terminations in there. Right then. The good thing about three of these is that they're uh, straight in, crush fit fittings. So, there is no lug required. See where I'll use that. So that's where that's gonna go. That's there. That's where I want it to bend. So I'm gonna put my hand, there we go, about 70, 80 mil inside the back from where it needs to bend. Again, you can use the trick of lift it up ever so slightly off the bottom. Take your mark to the top of the 
the unit where it's going to go into. So that's your mark there. Mark cross. Right. Got big uh, emu on the job there. What you don't have is the copper exposed down below so it still crimps onto the the crush fit fit and still gets hold of the copper but you don't see any of the copper below the uh, determination unit Terrible, isn't it? I can just barely see that. to use crush fits more. Thanks for the fortune. Now this one's got to actually do a bit of work, unfortunately. Have to put a plug on it. 
Eat, shrink, all that. Boom. That's the, the thick part. So if you cut across it, it rounds it off. So you've got a chance of starting the lug. So obviously that that one is exactly the same as that. There we go. Neutral's a bit wonky. I've just tried to straighten it there and all of the the whole of that mechanism moved because that's how shitely designed it is. But those crush fits, I love them. I know you can't use them all the time, but that's fabulous that. So what I'm gonna do now, bring the earth round, put it up and it's going up to that stud there because that one's only a six mil. It's pretty useless, really. So I'm gonna put it onto that back plate, but I haven't got the lugs yet. Apparently they're coming tomorrow. So that's just gonna be put in and left, like over the top there. But yeah, that's it for today. I said I'd do a, a 70 mil video. So it comes round underneath, up, and then I've let them, you see I've let them rise up Overneath, over the uh, earth stud and then swing into the panel it's taken about 
an hour, all told, I reckon. Well, I'll be able to see by the length of the video, really, won't I? So, yeah, that's it. I'll uh, see you at the next bit of graft. Well, I might make a short video about our foxy friend. Because I might bring him some food in tomorrow, if you're allowed. <laughs>